hunted human beings. This killer has baffled the police. Nobody can solve his cryptic code. The Zodiac Killer, infamous, unidentified. Between 1968 and 1970, the Zodiac terrorized America, leaving seven victims in his wake. But in his letters, he claimed a total of 37. He is killing just for the thrill. All that we have to go on is this vague physical description. Six foot two, 200 pounds, ghost. To this day, his identity remains unknown. But he left something behind. A bizarre code that the Zodiac says contains his name. It has beaten 50 years of attempts by the FBI, local law enforcement, and the CIA to break it. Until now. Look at this. Look at this. For the first time ever, two top investigators. I mean, I think this is something legit. Feed clues to a team of code breakers armed with a supercomputer trained to think like the killer. Tonight, a clue in a Zodiac letter. Check over here. Reveal something. Good. Unexpected. Got an area here that was dug out and covered over again by dirt. The original investigator on the case reveals new evidence. I think I know who the Zodiac is. While a new code emerges. We'll get our code team to look at this. Holy sh Crack the code. We got a hit. Find the Zodiac killer. <laughs> I've cracked the Zodiac 340 site. This is the biggest breakthrough in cryptology in the last 50 years. It's now one month into the investigation. Detectives Ken Maines and Sal La Barbera are searching the 20,000 acres of wilderness around Mount Diablo. A 3,800-foot high mountain that towers over the Zodiac's four confirmed crime scenes. What they find here could be crucial. I mean, Zodiac circled Mount Diablo. I mean, these crosshairs are right there. In two letters sent to the press in 1969 and 1970, the Zodiac laid out detailed blueprints of explosives placed in and around Mount Diablo. The level of expertise in the letters is impossible to ignore, as well as his impulse to kill. The Zodiac wrote that he was trying to hold back his homicidal desires, but will soon lose all control. But that's not all. The team has uncovered strong evidence that the Zodiac has a military background. And Mount Diablo has giant radio towers used to broadcast naval codes, which is why it is so compelling. In the 1960s, these towers were the hub for military encrypted messages, and particularly naval intelligence. For the team, it's just the latest development in the investigation. So far, Sal and Ken have zeroed in on two primary suspects. The first, ex-librarian Ross Sullivan. Sullivan fits the physical description of the Zodiac and has eerie connections to an earlier unsolved killing in Riverside, California that the Zodiac took credit for. He worked at the last place that Sherry Jo Bates was seen alive, at the library. In addition, Sullivan wore army boots similar to the ones found at the Zodiac's crime scenes. But perhaps most compelling, Sullivan studied cryptology and wrote a detailed paper on creating complex codes. The second suspect is career criminal Lawrence Kane. He was arrested for prowling. Kane was identified by a victim as the Zodiac killer, had a long rap sheet, and was unaccounted for during multiple Zodiac crimes including the 1966 Riverside murder. Kane also studied codes during his time in the Navy. You have a initiation, you have a timer, and the way it's placed, it's going through legs, it's going through body parts. That's a very deviant mind right there. Based on the evidence they have uncovered linking their prime suspects to the Zodiac's threats of burying a bomb at Mount Diablo, local law enforcement and one of the world's top bomb tech teams have joined the search. We have a lot of turns in the park. We have one curve down on Northgate Road that's locally known as School Bus Curve. 
Oh, wow. Uh, this is cool bus curve, cool <laughs> bus awesome. curve. Wow. Well, he certainly would have known that then, yeah. if that's commonly known. Yeah, it's a common name. Oh, wow. fantastic. That's a great place to start. Yeah. We can attack it from the ground, and you attack it from the air. And if you see something, you know, broadcast to us, and if we see something, we'll broadcast to you. And that will kind of help us search this area in a more efficient manner. Yeah. All right, let's All right. gather our gear and get out of here. We were the first people to search the area. If we find something, we have a chance for fingerprints. We could possibly have a chance for a DNA. And any materials that we find, where were these particular materials purchased from? Are there serial numbers? I'm going to know where he's been. I'm going to know what stores he's frequented and what he lived around. As the field team launches its search, Mount Diablo, to say nothing of the greater area here, is huge. USC professor Kevin Knight and his elite codebreakers try to narrow the hunting ground. They need an exact location to dig. The codebreakers focus on the Zodiac Killer's infamous Z-32 message. The Z-32 was sent to the San Francisco Chronicle on July 26, 1970. The killer claimed that solving the riddle of the cipher would reveal the location of hidden bombs. Until now, the code team has been focusing on the Zodiac Killer's most infamous code, the Z340, considered one of the three most difficult unsolved codes in the world. The Z32 uses similar symbols, but is far shorter. And for that very reason, it is even harder to crack. A long cipher contains lots of patterns. A uh, short cipher doesn't have as many patterns to exploit, and that makes it very difficult to decipher. So this is a Z32 unsolved cipher. It's part of this letter that says the map, coupled with this code, will tell you where the bomb is set. On the map, it puts this compass symbol centered on Mount Diablo. About a month later, he sent out a letter, and at the very end of the letter, he says, P.S., the Mount Diablo code concerns radians and inches along the radians. Radians are the measure of an angle on a circle. Inches along the radians would pinpoint a precise location. If we found a decipherment of Z32 that said something like, you know, one and a half radians this way and go two inches. That would specify an exact coordinate location and tell where the bomb is buried. Let's uh, put these into Carmel. Carmel. There's no other computer like it in the world. A code-breaking supercomputer that can think independently. It's cracked some of the world's most notorious encoded messages and ciphers. Kevin prepares to unleash Carmel's AI on the Z32. We're going to take this keyword approach. It's about radians, keyword. It's about inches, keyword. It's going to have some numbers in there. Maybe they're spelled out. Maybe they're digits. If Zodiac's made good on his word to put the location of the bomb in that cipher, OK, that's very concrete material. We can go to Sal and say, start digging right there, um, you know, carefully. OK, let's see. We have one curve down on North Cape Road that's locally known as School Bus Curve. In the 1960s, these towers were the hub for military encrypted messages. The Zodiac circled Mount Diablo, and these crosshairs are right there. Can. There's an area of interest here that on my map, it's showing uh, a campground that was used in the 1970s. After finding no explosive devices at School Bus Curve, the team focuses on an area on Mount Diablo they believe shows the most promise. Campgrounds, where school buses regularly unloaded their passengers in the 1970s. Uh, it looks like it's overgrown now, it's not in use. But in the 70s, it was. Maybe you want to try uh, trekking down that way. Roger that, bud. In his November 9th, 1969 letter, 
the Zodiac left a vital clue. He said that he would place bags of gravel on top of his bomb so he could ventilate anything that should be in the way of the blast. Look at this. Everywhere the team looks in the campground, there's gravel. You know, we have a gravel road, gravel pathways. It looks to be the same that would have been here during the, the 70s. Exactly. So when an explosion occurs, you not only got that blast pressure coming out, but now you've got this rock. You're potentially talking about a 1,000 projectiles. This is where the buses could have unloaded. This is where children would have come. This would be the perfect place to set off a device. Check over here. Good. Hey, Ken. That four, I copy. I got a visual on you now. This is a great spot here. And actually, the dog is out working the area. Come here. Here. Down. He's showing a strong change of behavior right there by the tree. Ken, we got a hit. I got a hit from the dog. For nearly eight hours, the supercomputer Carmel has been locked in a battle with the Zodiac Killer Z32 Cypher, a coded message he claimed would reveal the exact location of explosives buried on Northern California's Mount Diablo. So if we've got a, a decoding of Z32 that locates a promising spot, that's what we'd like to come up with to give to Sal and Ken. Uh, okay, okay, here we go. The results are coming out, so each one of these expressions in English... What? Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay. This time, no one sees Carmel's result coming. Uh, wow. Each one of these corresponds to some location on the map. Carmel doesn't give the coordinates of one location radiating out from Mount Diablo. It gives out a staggering 250,000 of them all over Northern California. So even with all the constraints we've put in, it seems like way too many possibilities. I don't see a way to pick out one of these solutions and say, hey, this one's better than all the other ones. I mean, I think there's a good chance that this thing is a tease and deciphering is something like, you know, California, you won't find it in time, ha ha. Even 50 years later, the Zodiac Killer can still outwit one of the world's most powerful supercomputers. It's amazing that the Zodiac keeps confounding both man and machine. In a sense, he's still taunting us today. It looked like there was a lot of interest in that area right there. 375 miles north, Sal and Ken are zeroing in on a possible target in a campground on Mount Diablo. Ken, this is, uh, this is fine here. Bomb Squad veteran Chris Christensen takes the lead in excavating the target zone using a non-conductive digging tool. I'm not too worried about the power source for this device at this point because it's been 47 years later. However, I've got a uh, plastic probe. The reason why is I don't want to break down any of potential evidence that I have. But what he finds brings more questions than answers. Well, that's kind of interesting. Got an area here that was dug out reburied, covered over again by dirt, right. by foliage again. And that, you know, it kind of leads me to believe there was a, something dug here before. Years ago, someone buried something in this exact location and then dug it up again. We don't know what that was, but now that object is gone. That's what I was afraid of? Yeah. We'll keep looking up here. Roger that. After the Zodiac's stunning outmaneuvering of Carmel, Kevin works late into the night reprogramming the supercomputer. Since the investigation started, we've been inputting tons and tons of information about the case into the supercomputer. And Carmel's been learning more and more as it goes. But after a while, the computer starts thinking for itself, searching down new avenues for a solution by itself. So it's almost like Carmel is becoming a living, pulsing version of the Zodiac Killer. 
doing things that we don't expect. Through the taxi and the prison break, alone and angry at a brutal murder, surrounded by an artificial lake, never a convicted murderer. Like an aggravated battery, a world of pain in murder, gunman kills. We did it. There's no bomb up there. Yeah. After 16 grueling hours scouring Mount Diablo, Sal and Ken realize that whatever may have been buried is no longer there. We had bomb technicians with us. We had canine bomb sniffing dogs. We even had a helicopter, and we didn't find anything. Do we take from this that he's a liar? This was all part of the chase all part of his riddles to, you know, make the city crazy. Let me see this. Hello, this is Sal. Sir. For weeks, Sal has been in contact with one of the first officers on scene of a confirmed Zodiac slang, who says he has new information on the case. After a lot of back and forth, we finally got this guy to meet with us. Ed Rust, he's a retired cop from Vallejo PD. The victims were still alive when he got there. Right. Um, I and mean, he, he could be such a wealth of information. Retired police officer Ed Rust was one of the first on the scene at the savage 1969 Zodiac slang in Vallejo, California. For decades, he's kept a growing file on the case he couldn't solve. So, you know, to be able to talk to an actual uh, first responder, get his point of view from the scene of an actual Zodiac case, nothing better. Could Rust's new information help implicate one of Sal and Ken's top suspects? Ross Sullivan, with connections to code writing and the Riverside victim, or Lawrence Kane, a Navy veteran with code training who was ID'd by another suspected Zodiac victim. Ed, the Vallejo homicide, we understand you were one of the first responding officers at yes. that crime scene. Mm -hmm. uh, our first patrol car, Dick Hoffman, uh, got to the scene and he says, I got two victims, gunshot victims here with the door. The first thing I saw was pulled out, or the passenger door was open, and there's a body laying on the ground. There's Mike Majo. He had been shot through the neck and had a hard time talking. And uh, I walked around to the car, and I felt Darlene's pulse, and she, she had a pulse. He just kind of mumbled a little bit, and couldn't talk, and she's just, you know, there, and I could see she had bullet holes had leaned in and she had been shot from the passenger side. Darlene died that night, leaving Michael as the only witness to the cold-blooded attack. I interviewed Michael mm -hmm. the next day at Kaiser Hospital. And keep in mind, he's medicated, shot to pieces and everything. And uh, he told me, that he emphasized that this guy was short. He said he was beefy, and he had a belly. As we sit here now, were there any suspects that you liked? Yeah, myself. I, I, think, I, <laughs> I think I know who the Zodiac is. Uh, yeah, this, this lives in my mind even right now. Sure. Sal and Ken are meeting with Ed Rust, a police officer who was on scene minutes after the Zodiac killer shot two people in an isolated park in Vallejo, California. Ed Rust has spent years pursuing the Zodiac. I think I know who the Zodiac is. Warren, you know, several names, but Lawrence Klein, Lawrence Kane. Well, why? Why Lawrence Kane? 
that, that, that's kind of a complicated story. Cain was associated with this woman named Donna Lass. Now, Donna Lass was a person that worked at Lake Tahoe. She disappeared from her workplace up there suddenly. Her car was found, uh, all of her clothing, and, you know, she just literally disappeared, and no trace of her has ever been found. 25-year-old Donna Lass, a night nurse at the Sahara Tahoe Casino, went to work on September 5, 1970, and never came home. Her body was never found, and many believe she was a victim of the Zodiac. Co-workers of Donna Lass said that she knew this Lawrence Kane, and she disappeared. The Zodiac mailed this postcard that may have pointed the way to a grave site. Zodiac works in riddles, and it was a riddle. And it's got some notes on it, look through the tree, stuff like that. Someplace in the Lake Tahoe area. Haunted by the Donna Lass mystery for decades, Ed has compiled extensive records that he has never shared with the public before. Wow, so this is what he sent that links possibly Zodiac to Donna Lass. Yeah. Peek through the pines, Lake Tahoe. There's something going on there. Well, we'll follow it up, I promise you. With Vallejo victim Michael Majot's description matching Lawrence Kane to a T, and now Kane's suspicious connection to another potential victim, Sal and Ken intensify their focus on the Navy veteran. There's a boatload of information here. Sal and Ken sift through Ed Rust's Zodiac files. We have to go through this and really see what's conjecture, what's opinion, what's factual. A lot of these files, I'm seeing the focus on Lawrence Kane. Look at this. Kane went to work for a real estate office located down the hallway from where Donna Lass's nurse's station was. Well, that's big. Was he? Was he stalking her? Exactly. Right. I mean, and look at this. There's a lady here that's a, in the National House of Pancakes in South Lake Tahoe. She's approached by, by a man that, right off the bat, asks her, what's your zodiac sign? So her girlfriend comes over. And then he's telling these ladies that he recently read a chart or did a chart of a murderer. I mean, that scared the, the daylights out of her. Did they describe him? The description is as a white male in his late 30s or 40s, about 5'9", regularly length brown hair, and he wore plastic horn rimmed glasses. One month after Donna last disappeared, somebody's talking about zodiac signs that matches the exact description of Lawrence Kane. The man in the diner, a dead ringer for Kane. Was this the zodiac trawling for new victims? Hey, Sal. Mm hmm. Look at this photograph I just found. Wasn't those ladies saying something about IHOP? What's that look like to you? If that isn't Lawrence Kane, that's Lawrence Kane's twin. No, that's Lawrence Kane. No, there's no doubt. You can see on that curb there, it says IHOP. I mean, how, how often do you have to frequent this restaurant? Do you have a photograph? That's, that's big. Everything we're finding here, I mean, through all of this, is pointing to South Lake Tahoe. That's where we have to go next. The team has linked Lawrence Kane, one of their two chief suspects, to the Zodiac Killer's 1969 Vallejo, California attack and the abduction of Kathleen Johns eight months later. Now they have discovered a connection between Kane and Donna Lass, a woman who disappeared from Lake Tahoe in 1970. Many believe Lass was a Zodiac victim based on a sinister postcard sent to the press. I took a picture of it. Um, I'm going to text it to you here shortly. The code team will evaluate whether or not the card could be the work of the Zodiac and what clues it might contain to Donna Lass's disappearance. 
It's got a uh, text that's been cut out from newspapers or magazines and glued on. So Sierra Club, around in the snow, sod victim number 12, peek through the pines in double quotes, uh, past Lake Tahoe areas. Zodiac, because we got a Zodiac signature on the front of the card. This postcard was mailed to San Francisco Chronicle reporter Paul Avery six months after Donald Lass vanished. There's something stunning about this card. The featured artwork was clipped from an advertisement for a condominium complex. That complex was just across the water from Donna's hometown of South Lake Tahoe. It seems like Zodiac's taking credit for victim 12. Many of his other letters had a kill count, and so it seems he's continuing the pattern with this card. It's certainly Zodiac style to brag about how many people he's killed. We've got a little uh, hole punch up here. There was a previous instance of him cutting things out of newspapers and using a hole punch. I think he sent this card out before the Donald Ass card. The hole punches are striking. Six months before the Pines postcard was sent, the San Francisco Chronicle received a card with very similar hole punch markings. Dear editor, you'll hate me, but I've got to tell you, the pace isn't any slower. In fact, it's just one big 13th. There's hole punches in both cards. There's a zodiac symbol, the crosshairs on both cards. It's got a mishmash of pasted text from different newspapers. The team digs deeper into these two potential Zodiac cards, focusing on the numerology. So we also have the 13 hole punches on the side, right? And there was a lot of talk at the time about Zodiac and when he was killing. Under what astrological sign was he doing it? You know, was there a pattern to this? So there are some lunar-based calendars based on the number 13. And one of those is the 13 moon natural time calendar. Based on lunar phases, the 13 moon calendar divides the year into 13 months, not 12. There are 28 days per month and seven days per week. The names of the days are different than the ones on our standard calendar, and each has its own symbol. So here we see the 13 moon natural time calendar where we have one day of the week called the Dolly Day, right? And its symbol is the zodiac symbol. Yeah. The Zodiac used patterns to write his ciphers. Is it possible that his killing spree also follows a pattern? Perhaps one based on a calendar that follows the moon's phases? So we have four confirmed crimes. So maybe we should check those and see if they all line up under the Dolly Day. Yeah, OK. So let's try the first confirmed case, right? Like Herman Road, uh, December 20th, 1968. And that falls Looks on a dolly like, day. That's interesting. Blue Rock Springs, mm -hmm. July 4th, 1969. 4th of July, 69. Hey, that's there. good. Yeah. Wow. Also a dolly day. Great. All right, and the next one's Lake Berryessa. Berryessa. That was September 27th, 1969. September 27. Yeah. Bingo. What the hell? Dolly hit number three. OK. October 11th, 1969. There it is. <laughs> so four hits. The pattern is stunning. There's only one more day to check the day Donna Lass mysteriously vanished. Donna Lass. Donna yeah, Lass. that's uh, September 6, 1970, right? September. So we should try that. Yeah, I think that's Six, right. 1970. Oh, that's one too. Unbelievable. The implications are chilling. Donna Lass disappeared on the same lunar day as the Zodiac's four confirmed killings. The chances of those events all randomly occurring on a Dolly Day are one in 20,000. And what's even more incredible 
The day on the lunar calendar that he did his killing is represented by the zodiac symbol. With reinforcement from the code team, Sal and Ken land in Lake Tahoe, Donna Lass's last known location. Retired police officer Ed Rust has given them a lead, one of the few surviving friends of Lass. Hello. Hello. Is this Larry? Yeah, this is Larry. Hi, Larry. This is Ken Maines. I'm uh, an investigator looking into the Donna Lass uh, missing persons case. I got your name from some files and it indicated that you possibly knew Donna or lived with her? Both. Oh, really? Yes. We're in Lake Tahoe area. Uh, is there any way that uh, maybe we can meet up with you and discuss the matter? Yeah, uh, for sure. A lot of times you don't get that opportunity to talk to witnesses about decade-old cases, especially after 50 years. But there's not an expiration date for justice. Detectives Sal La Barbera and Ken Maines have come to South Lake Tahoe, investigating the 1970 disappearance of Donna Lass. A cryptic postcard points to the Zodiac Killer, and a person of interest in her case is none other than Lawrence Kane, one of two prime suspects. Larry? Yes, sir. For the first time ever, Donna's friend Larry Lowe has agreed to an interview. His insights could be crucial because the missing woman lived with Larry and his wife up until two weeks before her disappearance. She was a beautiful person, just a really outgoing personality, very sweet. Do you think that she was uh, trusting of people? Oh, too much. Too, too much. much. Too much. Okay. And I, I told her about that. I said, you think everybody is your friend, and I said, be careful. You don't want to be that trusting. If somebody tried to steal something, take something, she's the type that would have fought, oh, fought yeah. back. Oh yeah. Okay. She was, she was stout. She was in good shape. Yeah. Do you have suspects or anyone that? We've come across a name during all of this. I don't know if it rings a bell to you at all. Lawrence Kane. I don't know if that's a name that you've heard before. I knew him well. So you knew a person by that name? Absolutely. That would have been 71. Okay. So I opened a little tropical fish store. Within a month or so, this individual came in. So I'd been to his place several times because he was always having trouble. Well, Larry, you got to come and look at the fish and stuff. This guy, he had, he collected everything. He had some swords. Pretty sure he had some guns, but I mean, there was all kinds of stuff he right. collected. How about astrology stuff? I think he had a, pic, a, a plaque or something of the Zodiac, and then I think right. he... A what? He had a what? Like a plaque, a round plaque of the Zodiac on one of the walls. What do you mean by I Zodiac, though? I mean, isn't there a Zodiac calendar? Okay. Astrology calendar. Astrology calendar. Astrology calendar. Yeah, that's okay. right. I mean, astrology calendar. He was raised by his mother. He didn't have a father. What was his relationship with his mom? Did he talk about his mom a lot? Yeah. Yeah, he was obsessed with his mother. Where did his mom live at the time? I can't tell you the exact... But this area? Up no, in Tahoe no, 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 no. Closer to the Bay Area. He would go down at least once a month or every two months. So he was traveling from Lake Tahoe to San Francisco area to see his mom? Yeah. In talking to Larry Lowe about Lawrence Kane, I'm seeing a lot of signature elements where he could potentially be Zodiac. I mean, I'm starting to like him more than our other prime suspect, Ross Sullivan. With Lawrence Kane's movements lining up with the Zodiac killings and the disappearance of Donna Lass, Sal and Ken look for additional links between her disappearance and Kane, or the Zodiac. They reach out to the Tahoe Police Department and get high-level access to Bob Cosley, an investigator for the local DA's office, and Jake Hermanghouse, lead detective on the Donna Lass cold case. 
the Donna Lass case, is she still considered a missing person, or have we she is still her? She's still a missing person. Okay. And so this postcard that was sent back in 1970, this location you guys are familiar with or were at the time? This year? Yeah, it was identified by the detectives in the original part of the case. Uh, it's a rendering from an ad, and the ad is a uh, place in Incline Village. So it's on the other side of Lake on the Nevada side. Oh, okay. What kind of follow-up did that cause the investigators at the time to do? There have been several times where they've done um, area checks based upon codes that were deciphered by people that would send us code, or what they think is the Zodiac code. And the codes would lead to an area that they believe that her remains or something of interest would have been in her case. But ultimately, so far, we've never been able to locate Mrs. Lass. All about rabbit holes. Lots of rabbit uh, holes you go down. That's <laughs> out of trouble that's, on, yeah. on these cases. But that's exactly you got to reach down there and hopefully you get a rabbit. Well, we actually have, uh, as a part of our, our, our team, five of the world's best code breakers. So if you got any literature that you would like us to look at uh, with codes, we would. Definitely Gladly take it, it and take it back to yeah. them and see yeah. what they could come up with. Oh, uh, yeah, there is one thing. Okay. Um, so this poster was inside of the case file, and it has some type of encryption on it or, you know, cipher. The origin of this reward poster is unknown. A copy was anonymously sent to the authorities marked up with cryptic symbols, and some believe the man responsible was the Zodiac himself. The code has been translated by a lot of different people over the years. Here's a solution we got from a guy in Texas. We analyzed it. We couldn't figure out where it was telling us to go. This cipher solution sent to the police contains a detailed but jumbled set of directions that could lead to Donna Lass's body. Everything we get is a lead into any of our cases, but I'm not a cryptologist. If you don't mind, we'll get our uh, code team to look at the solution and see what they can come up with. If we can find Donna Lass's remains, that could speak volumes. There's potential DNA, there's potential evidence there to identify a suspect. And the last person that stood over her could potentially be Zodiac. Kevin, Sal, this is uh, in reference to Donna Lass. There's a code and a potential solution to this code, and we're hoping you can take a look at the. This may spell out a location where her body was disposed of. Investigating the disappearance of Donna Lass, a possible new Zodiac victim in Lake Tahoe, the field team has gotten a lead from Tahoe PD. The solution to a mysterious cryptogram on Lass's missing person flyer. After unearthing links between Lass and suspect Lawrence Kane, Sal and Ken believe this possible solution from an amateur codebreaker, which the police found too confusing to follow, could be a break in the case. All right, let's pull up the solution that Sal and Ken sent us. Kevin and his team will analyze the solution to see if it could be a code written by the Zodiac Killer, and if so, try to decipher it. This guy's got a lot of uh, decryption methods, including anagrams. But clearly, uh, his purpose is to provide directions to take us step by step to where Donna Lass's body is buried. Anagramming is kind of dangerous. Once you start rearranging symbols, there, there are a lot of different messages you can get. This is going the other end of the spectrum from a simple substitution. The only Zodiac code ever broken was a code called Z408. Z408 used a simple substitution method in which one symbol always represented one letter of the alphabet. So this complex solution from South Lake Tahoe that uses anagrams, scrambling the letters multiple times to make many different words, is either out of character or shows the Zodiac was evolving into a more skilled code writer. Statistically, we can't say this is actually a valid type or not. But if you can compile all these directions and create a list of instructions that the field team, like Sal and Ken, can actually execute. So if we follow these directions in the real world and we find Donna Lass's remains, then I guess that would, that would prove this correct. We can't rule out Zodiac being the author. I think Zodiac got more creative and more creative with his ciphers. So it's very possible he took a bigger step and made yet a more advanced cipher. The next challenge facing the team is determining a logical order for the directions, 
one decoded symbol at a time. The backwards E means start at a casino. Proceed west from the casino until you get to a fork in the road. Next step. Proceed in a relatively northwest direction until you arrive at an intersection. Make a 90 degree turn. From that intersection, you go north, north for 27, 27 miles, miles until you reach another intersection. So if we found Donna Lass's remains 47 years later, it could tell you manner of death. It could tell you what caliber of weapon was used if she was shot. All those things can lead you to potentially the suspect. That's telling us to make a negative 45 degree turn left and head westward. So that's going to be into the mountains. Right. This looks good, looks right. The road will gradually curve into a 100-degree angle going north. So let's see if that happens. And we are directly north right now. We're in the right direction, then. Unbelievable. It's making sense so far. Get off the highway, and then make two back-to-back 90-degree -back turns. Just right? Right. That's incredible. Each turn, each stop is lining up with something that's there. And we're at an area, looks like, you know, for hiking. Walk through the west wing of a Y-shaped road, and then through the woods. Right here, we are. Y-shaped road, and that would it's be west. west. Yes. These instructions are leading us to a trail. This is huge. Let's go look. marker, right? I mean, this is where this map is leading us. Donner Summit Trails. I mean, the Donner Party, uh, that's kind of weird. The ill-fated Donner Party, a group of California-bound pioneers, was trapped in these mountains by winter storms in 1846. Most died of starvation. Some resorted to cannibalism. If that solution is right, why bring us here, Donner Summit? Obviously, Zodiac's sick and twisted. So, I mean, he could have picked Donner Pass because of its gruesome history and past. And to me, Donner Pass, Donner Lass, that's no coincidence. That's classic Zodiac. Next time on The Hunt for the Zodiac Killer. Look at this. Peek through the pines. That's where I'd bury somebody. Finding Donna Lass's remains could tell us who Zodiac is. From this point forward, it's a crime scene. Zodiac is crossing state lines. We need to go to the FBI. This investigation has a significant amount of documentation. I've never seen this before. I'm going to kill her August 10th at 5 p.m. And there's a cipher. If there's a name in that cipher, we need to know it. Here we go, here we go. Oh, all right. We might have a new Zodiac victim. It's unbelievable.